Well, hi folks, how's it going? Uh, my name is Alex Goodman. Um, I'm a senior software engineer at Anchor, and I'm here to talk about uh, problems that you might find in containers and how they get hidden. So, so in this image here, it, we have all the layers for this image, and the layer that's selected right now is, is best, uh, most representative of the application payload, and it's, it's 13 megs in size. Uh, but the whole image is 500 megs. And so in another example here, so the, the application payload is about you know, 230 megs, but the, the, the image is 3.2 gigs. The idea is that you're shipping a lot more than your application, especially now that we bought into uh, container technologies, there's a lot more surface area that you need to defend, and there's a lot more places that stuff can hide. So what are the kinds of things that can get hidden? Well, you have the, you know, the typical uh, you know, secrets, et cetera, uh, as well as unintended assets, such as like you have development payloads, uh, or any blobs that may be sitting around, or known vulnerabilities for your OS packages or any of the language packages that you're bringing in. So what are the common ways that this stuff gets hidden? So these are the, the top three ways-ish that you'll find most of the time, is, is folks uh, in their Docker files going off and removing something with a re remove command, but it doesn't actually remove anything. It's just adding a whiteout file. And so if you were to push that image, you still have that, that, uh, the payload that's being pushed up to your registry. So not good. Uh, also, you have, uh, if you're just, you know, in bulk fashion adding, you know, everything that you can in your Docker context and you don't have the proper Docker nor file in place, uh, you may be adding something that you just didn't intend whatsoever. Uh, and the last one, maybe you're just installing packages and this is probably everyone. So it, when you install a package, you know, you may have a vast set of dependencies, you know, that are also coming along for the ride. So, do you, you know, are, are, you, are you up to date? Do you have all the patches, et cetera? So how do we surface these hidden problems? Well, uh, the best way is to uh, try to describe what is in your image. So the best way to do this is to generate an SBOM. And then take that description and analyze it for either known problems or known expectations, or at least an audit trail uh, left behind for incident response. Um, so, SIFT is a tool used to generate SBOMs. Um, it generates SBOMs uh, in, in uh, SPDX 2.2, Cyclone DX 1.2. It knows how to generate SBOMs uh, for container images, for file systems. Um, uh, it knows how to catalog uh, a wide variety of ecosystems and, and also beyond just packages. Um, uh, and it outputs in both like a you know, table summary as well as like rich JSON output. So it'll go on forever so in that regard. Um, yeah, so when it comes to for looking for problems, we have Gripe. Um, so Gripe is a lightweight vulnerability scanner. Uh, it knows how to look for vulnerabilities uh, for in a list of packages, whether that comes from a container image, a file system, or if you have an SBOM, which is really useful because you don't need to bring all those bytes with you, the, the entire image that you're scanning. You really just need the SBOM, and that's a lot faster to scan. Uh, and this supports you know, several different ecosystems. Um, uh, uh, for scanning, again, uh, for matching vulnerabilities. So yeah, so now we have these two tools. We wanna tie this together into a workflow. And so the idea is that you build your image and you generate your SBOM. Then you use that SBOM to run quality gates against it. So vulnerabilities, secrets, et cetera. Whatever it is that is important to your organization. And then after all that's done, you publish your image and your SBOM. Um, a lot of people cu couple step one and three together. They, they build and push their image and then they run tests against it, which is something you don't wanna do because if you have something like secrets, then you're gonna have to spend all day scrubbing that from your registry. Um, so, um, so what we're gonna do is use uh, Canico and Sift for building uh, an image and generating an SBOM, uh, Gripe and a little bit of scripting for uh, quality gates and Scopio and Cosine for publishing our image and our SBOM. And we're gonna tie this all together using Tekton, a uh, Kubernetes native uh, CI solution. Uh, so yeah, all right, it's demo time. All right, so we have an application called Count Goober. Uh, it is uh, an application, you know, uh, given a number in a sentence, it knows how to extract it and replace it with other numbers, very useful. Uh, so now we have this very useful application. We want to uh, build and uh, uh, you know, validate the image. So here we have a, a Tecton pipeline uh, made up of a, of a set of tasks here uh, for building and validating uh, uh, this image. And so I've already got this loaded up locally so we, um, uh, and already run in a Tecton run. So, sorry, in a Tecton uh, pipeline run. So here's what this pipeline looks like. Um, 
So we're fetching our repo, we're prepping some assets, and we're building our image. And when we build this image with Canico, uh, it stays local, we're not pushing it anywhere. Then with SIFT, we are generating our SBOM, and this SBOM, we get, we get a, an SBOM.json output at the very end here, which has all the information that we need. And we, you know, we show a nice summary uh, to show, uh, yep, it looks like our Count Goober app is indeed there, at version 010. And once we get to the quality section of our pipeline, it looks like we have a vulnerability scan, and we're using the SBOM as input. And we've, uh, uh, we will fail if there is a uh, severity that is of higher or greater. And it looks like that's what's happened. So the quality gets failed here. And yeah, it looks like NLTK uh, has a few high, uh, high severity vulnerabilities that we need to uh, remediate. So, okay, that's one problem. Uh, it looks like there's a secret here too. And, and notice that we're using our SBOM as input. Um, and if I look at the details, yeah, it looks like assets config env has got a generic API key. And we don't actually have the key value here in the logs because again, we don't want to have to scrub stuff. So, you know, no values are here. Okay, so let's go and start remediating stuff. So in our application, uh, we said NLTK needs to get updated. So it looks like if I were to head down to, yeah, it's at 3.4.4, so. All right, so we're updating NLTK, and our other problem was we had a secret laying around. And assets config, yep, we have an API key, and don't worry, this is a fake one. You can take as many pictures as you want. Um, and yeah, so let's go to uh, what the, uh, the culprit of this is. Looks like when we're prepping assets, we have this config env that is uh, capturing all of our environment variables. We probably shouldn't be doing that. So, um, and that's not in our Git repo, that's just in the pipeline. So, um, so I commit and I push this. So now I've remediated all my problems, I think. Um, so I head back to our pipeline, I kick off another run, and just for time, uh, I've already done that run. Uh, so yeah, green all around. Looks like we built our image, generated our SBOM. Our SBOM shows that NLTK has been updated indeed. Pass our vulnerability scan, and we have um, passed our secrets quality gate. And we published our image, so it's been, uh, been pushed to our registry. Uh, and we also have published out the SBOM. It's also sitting in our registry. Uh, so. And I've already pulled down this image, but it looks like indeed it is working A-OK. -okay. And if I wanted to check out the SBOM, I can always do uh, use cosine uh, to pull down uh, and take a look at specifically what the SBOM contents are. So in this case, lots of JSON. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that's all I have. Let's see. Uh, thanks. Um, um, yeah, if you uh, come and find me, if you want to talk about SIFT, about Gripe, I'm happy to talk about anything whatsoever. Uh, we'll be at Tom's Watch Bar tonight uh, for Anchor-hosted uh, happy hour. Uh, thank you. <laughs>